Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of Center of Business Excellence of the School of Economics and Business, Ljubljana, to today's step of uh, e-talk. Side hustling, remote work and side hustling threat or opportunity. Remote and hybrid work is here to stay. And many consider that in the future, it will stay after the COVID-19. So threat or opportunity will be discussed with today's guests. And I would like to warmly welcome you all. Katarina Shustarsic and Petra Biziak from Outfit7. Katarina, um, Director of Project Management and Petra, HR Business Partner. Lucia Saevet, CEO of Amazon and also with us Anissa Faganil, HR Director. Matej Cherne from the School of Economics and Business, Ljubljana University, and also Luca Ergen, who will moderate this debate. And please, Luca, the floor is yours. Before that, I would only like to kindly invite all the, uh, uh, all, all the guests who are with us via YouTube channel to comment or ask, ask questions directly into uh, the, the comment session under, uh, under the YouTube channel. And we'll try to answer all these questions uh, in the next 60 minutes. Luca, please. Masha, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so as Masha already said, we'll be discussing the, the sites of the remote, uh, remote work and also the site hosting that is ever so present nowadays. Um, so this structure, uh, the, this uh, this e-talk will be structured in the following manner that we will be discussing first a bit of the theory from our professor uh, Cherne and then go straight into the practice with our distinguished guests. Uh, and we'll try to keep it uh, keep it in wrap in in uh, under an hour. So there will be also opportunities for you to ask the questions. So uh, feel free to do so. Um, so if we just jump right in, um, Professor Terne, uh, as we discussed, you know the side hustling and also the remote the, the remote work. How do you see this connection? What are the positive and negative uh, sides of these two? Uh, let's say um concepts and as well as how is that uh, connected to the era that we're living right now so po post covid and maybe also if we touch upon how that's changed because of the covid itself yeah thanks so much um let's first start with what side hustling actually is right so it's a sideline that brings in cash something other that you do outside of your main job um, it could be gig work, could be something else, basically a side project that you have, could be an official business that you start, could be some other projects that you do, could be gig work. So it's definitely on the uptake, especially in the recent Corona-driven global shift to remote work even more. Um, even more present in the gig economy um, with the uptake of platforms such as Uber, Lyft, Volt, Glovo, Amazon Mechanical Turk, Prolific that basically enable to provide anyone with the opportunity to do services outside of main employment. So there are many positives, I would say. Um, in research, uh, research nicely identifies some um, positives related to more flexibility, um, at least in theory, let's say, as a source of additional income, for sure. Um, it means an opportunity for individuals to develop new skills which is also a potential benefit for the employers, right, of those side hustles. There are also negatives, for sure. Work overload, technology overload, if it's done through um, digital means, stress, potential burnout of the side hustlers, issues related to work-life balance, potential mental health, um, and, of course, loss of engagement and performance for the actual organizations, the employers of side hustlers. Okay, perfect. Makes sense in theory. But now let's uh, let's uh, let's jump in into the practice, right? So we have two uh, two companies with us today. Uh, so Katerina and Petra are from Outfit Seven Company, uh, that uh, that is from the high tech industry. Uh, and we also have Lucia and Anissa from Amazon, which is uh, from the let's say uh, automotive industry uh, in, from the, in the service uh, service uh, in the service part. Um, so um, we have already these two different uh, dimensions here, and we were talking about, you know, how, how this actually adds up in the, the diversity of the companies. So maybe my question here would be, you know, how the uh, side hustling is uh, in each company, each industry. Of course, there are engineers, software developers, and we have then the auto mechanics on the other side. 
So um, my question here would be, let, let's say first for Katarina and Petia, uh, Petra. So uh, do your employees have side hustles and uh, you know, how do you perceive it and how do they perceive it? Mm -hmm. Um, so I would have to say that in Outfit 7, we pay really a lot of attention in how we select our future employees. Um, we select people that are really passionate about what they do and, you know, that they combine basically their uh, profession, uh, which is also their hobby at the same time. And I think this is really important to understand when we start talking about side hustlings, right? Um, and we, um, we notice that, you know, if you hire this kind of people, then maybe um, um, this is not so obvious. But on the other hand, we, we how to say, we really promote this diversity of talents we really um, i'm really happy that i work in the environment when where people possess so many different skills and talents right um we are quite transparent already in the beginning of our process when we start a cooperation that um you know um, we will provide a lot of challenges for the people and that they will be able to follow towards their um, goals and grow, right? Um, and um, we are also transparent in a way that if you work as a project manager in Outfit 7, that you will not be able to work as a project manager for another company, right? Um, and um, so, as I said, we have many different talents and I can also um, give some examples. For example, we have many yoga teachers, right? And um, I'm really happy that uh, two of them, actually one of them, it's Petra, you know, uh, started to do internal yoga session for our employees. Um, we have a lot of people that really also professionally um, uh, uh, loves music. They play instruments, right? And uh, a group of them joined and they said, why not create an Outfit 7 band? And we have it. Uh, and they are playing in our internal events where they are playing in front of 400 people, basically, you know. Um, so we do have these um, um, site activities and we are proud of it. And we believe that, you know, it is important that we establish a culture where this is um, transparent discussion that manager and employee creates environment where they um, you know, uh, are focused on the employee growth. Mm -hmm. Is there anything to add? Yeah, I think this transparency is really important. It's important that um, if you have a passion, if you want to do something, that you talk about it and try to find a solution how to follow your passion. So it, it can be, a lot of time it can be internally. It doesn't You don't need to search for something somewhere else. So, um, and we have a lot of also people who switch their career because they were following their passion. We try to give them the challenges to follow this passion and then they switch the career inside our companies. So um, there's a lot of options, but I think it's really important that uh, the communication part. Mm. Okay, perfect. So just before we go to the Amazon, so I would just uh, have a follow up question. So uh, when you said that you have uh, a lot of internal groups that, you know, are um, passionate about some kind of activities, do you also then provide employee resource groups for that, uh, for that, uh, for that purpose? So uh, how is it uh, from the organizational point of view? Of, of course, we try to support uh, if, if there's an initiative, yeah. we try to support it. Um, of course, not all possibilities are, um, yeah. not all initiatives always uh, come true. Maybe they come true after a while when it's uh, more connected also with company goals. Um, so yeah, we try to support, um, but keeping in mind the added value for uh, the company and the person. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So now going to Amazon. So, so kind of the same question. So how is it with, uh, you know, side hustling of your employees? How do you see it? Do you see it as a positive or negative thing? Uh, do you support it? Or uh, how, what's your take on it? Yeah, it's pretty the same as also um, uh, Katarina and Petra explained. Also for us, it's very important to speak about that um, because uh, we have uh, a pretty uh, about eight 
eight, uh, 80 uh, mechanics uh, and uh, this is um, somehow uh, a traditional uh, uh, from, from the traditional old uh, craftsmanship that means uh, it's uh, very uh, important uh, to speak uh, what uh, the need of uh, newcomer or existing employees what's the passion what the hobbies are and uh, where uh, the job line finish and where the afternoon uh, start. So uh, I think um, a lot of company uh, like us have problem with that, but important is um, to be transparent, to speak about that, uh, to show awareness or uh, also uh, understand uh, the needs of employees and then to search for solution. We didn't found uh, yet all solutions, but maybe a good example was uh, we have an agent in our call center. He has a boat master exam and uh, he really do out of passion uh, sailing and so on. He also uh, has a license to teach. So um, he developed uh, together with Anissa and the team of our academy uh, special uh, program. Yeah, special oh, program. Uh, so uh, here we could combine because it's some kind of mobility in a wide uh, perspective. And it was something new for us. Uh, he gave the idea, we took it, and uh, it, it was uh, one good sample uh, how to, to make it work. Now, I think the integration is very important, but as I said, I think a lot of company maybe don't speak about it, but it, it's important um, to, to speak, to understand why someone is doing that. Is it hope? Is it passion? Uh, it's maybe something that uh, is uh, some, some kind of uh, things there also in the daily job we could maybe change or give them additional uh, challenges and so on. Um, so uh, to find solutions, yes. Okay, super. Uh, Anissa, would you like to add anything? Or it's let's see, uh, already said everything. She already said everything. I, maybe, okay. I think really it's, uh, it's important to hear people what their needs are and to try to find the, the, the common points and what can you, from the hobbies, from uh, their passions, what can you implement in your vision, in your strategy, and maybe you can find a really good uh, good match and do mm -hmm. something together. So maybe um, this is it. <laughs> okay. So uh, if we just yeah, if we just summarize, let's say what we discuss here. So if we pinpoint two most important things that come from the let's say side hustling in your two organizations are uh, uh, communication and transparency. Um, and maybe as uh, Lucia then uh, already mentioned, you know that uh, it uh, the side hustling comes from the work, the let's say the mode of work, uh, and how and how that connects to the work organization itself uh, in in an organization, and that's uh, that's exactly how you know side hustling then uh, comes up. Um, so it comes from the mode of work, and when we have this hybrid or remote or, uh, remote uh, kind of work. Um, then of course side hustling is is exemplified, um, and maybe uh, maybe that can, that can be even more seen in the IT industry. So maybe uh, Petra and Katarina, how do you have right now um, uh, your work organized? So do you have this uh, remote or hybrid mode? Uh, as well as do you see that as a potential way how employees can do more of side hustle or less of it? Um, and yeah, what's the, what's the, let's say, actual uh, status of that in, in your company? Mm -hmm. So um, basically, you know, because we have these highly engaged and motivated people, um, the, um, the mode of work is not affecting us so much. So it means that regardless, either we are working from home and we are working um, um, uh, in the office, um, and the side hustling thingy did not change a lot. We didn't notice, and we are, as, as uh, we already mentioned, transparent regarding this. In terms of our current mode, so if we have 100% in the office in one side, and if we have 100% on the other side, right, this hybrid line is quite long. 
and it means that basically there are many different models of hybrid work and um, we also establish our own way you know through many discussions through many uh, talks what would be the best uh, thing for us you know um what we also notice is that you know we um, um we didn't uh, implement any quick changes, right? So even though some restrictions were gone uh, in Slovenia now, um, we didn't jump into a different solution. So um, we are still keeping our mode, but of course doing constant rechecks, either this is still okay or not, right? Um, we are currently working in the hybrid mode, mode which is very flexible and we encourage our teams uh, basically to decide where they would work, you know, in terms of physical locations. Um, and what does this mean in practice? In practice, this means that some teams recognize that it is, they, they are more efficient if they work in the office, right? And they are coming to the office more often. Um, on the other hand, some other teams um, said, okay, we will come twice per week and they are organizing like that. So we are promoting this flexibility, which I think it's really important for the employees, right? Um, and um, what, what I, um, uh, so currently we have approximately one third of the company that is working in the office. Um, and uh, of course, some uh, support function like office, IT, because of the nature of work, they work more in the office. Um, what we have done just recently is uh, we sent out one survey where we um, basically, um, you know, ask about past experience and future preferences so that we will be able to do these tweaks again, you know, um, what, uh, what we can adjust and so on in the future. Um, this is in short, so hybrid mode with um, flexibility and putting basically a responsibility on the team level um, and just having some basic frameworks on which um, these teams, of course, are um, 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 uh, driven, you know. Okay, perfect. Um, and um, I think this, uh, these two points are really good so that uh, when you have the lux uh, luxury of, let's say, flexibility and then, of course, the nature of work, that depends on the mode of the work that will be done in an organization, right? So when we have this IT sector on the one hand and we have the service sector uh, with, let's say, focus in automotive, uh, it's probably a different story, right, Lucia and Anissa? So how's, uh, how's with the work from home and remote work uh, in your organization? Yeah, we unfortunately we can't perform our technical services uh, remotely, so um, we closed twice uh, because uh, there was a uh, restriction. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, just in this time, we really uh, they were really uh, low also in the central part or in the supportive. Um, departments but otherwise when um, the requirement was or when we opened again uh, and 300 plus employees come back to our 30 uh, center or 29 uh, in this time center uh, we somehow uh, all come back uh, because uh, there is, it was tough time also uh, to be close uh, with customers we really do also some services uh 24 7 uh, all over the year uh we never close it because the road set assistance there was a need uh, even in the uh, toughest time uh so we were thinking uh we one for all so we also uh all departments uh from uh the central um central department uh yeah headquarter come back uh to be supportive also for uh all, all other uh, employees. Uh, but nevertheless, we uh, try to make a hybrid in, in some departments now. Uh, so when you have more time in focus and so on, it's of course, uh, and it's need to, to have more quiet uh, days. Uh, 
uh, it's uh, also good in terms of environment uh, not uh, to have uh, so many uh, uh, or also yeah. for, for the time to, to lose on the road so uh, it's okay but uh, we have uh, some kind of rule twice a week uh, or more if it's uh, needed no problem but I really believe it's important um, to be equal uh, also to others so uh here i really try always with the knees or i'm very uh, push in terms of we we need somehow how same agreement if we would be development company i would fully support remote but in case uh, so you need physical uh, service you need to come or we need to be here for our members and customers so uh, it's necessary to be on location uh so uh, in this way i support also for us to be here uh to be for our uh for our teams uh if they need us and uh it's yeah. important it's, it's really important also uh, to them to our employees to see us that we are in our offices so they think it's <laughs> we are closer <laughs> just like that it's it's the same we all know that we are equal performers uh, at home or here in the office, but it, it's okay for them. So they uh, they they feel better if we are here in the office. So I think it's okay to us. It's not uh, every time uh, convenient, but it's <laughs> it's the right thing to do. But we were we were otherwise we were good prepared also for remote work uh, because uh, in the time when we all uh, needed to. <laughs> So to do it remote, uh, we also did uh, from call center to insurance uh, sales uh, remote. So uh, basically, what uh, was possible, we did it remote. Uh, that that's why also from uh, flexibility uh, of our employees was very uh, great. Uh, uh, there were really uh, not a lot of uh, problems, and uh, I am amazed uh, how good we were prepared also for uh, this stress test. Uh, so uh, it was uh, some great experience and give us also push in terms of digital uh, or even more uh, push in, in the digital way of doing, of thinking, of uh, switching the mindset of the culture and so on. So uh, there was times when we were really uh, uh, at least once a week with all uh, employees uh, on vir virtual Kavarna, how to say it in English, uh but, yeah <laughs> on yes. teams <laughs> but we were amazed how many people came uh through the phones through the computers uh so uh, it was a great experience also to see uh how far uh we can go uh if there is a will so but we are very physical down to earth uh, like a family so uh now we uh, last uh, friday we had um, again uh, some uh, small gathering, so uh, it's important uh, for our team to be also physical. Um, yes. I hope, look, I, I, we were not too long. <laughs> no, no, of course not. I think that I think that this is a great question also for uh, for outfit. Um, so you know, even that now we are in this remote kind of era, or let's say hybrid one. So how do you keep uh, keep in touch? Uh, how do you then connect uh, employees as well as you know, like uh, Lucia said. So, so the gatherings, the, the the physical touch, physical presence. How do you deal with that? Uh, I, I do remember that you had an event uh, over the summer when the restrictions were, you know, uh, out at in the Arboretum, Volchipotok and so on. So you are doing, uh, being very proactive on that front. So yeah, uh, like how do you keep up with this? <laughs> yeah, this part is uh, really, really important. And maybe I have to also point out one more thing, which is, which also helped us a lot in terms of going remote because we are international company and we have offices around the world. So we, um, even in normal times, uh, we have some people remote. Um, and in terms of them, some things were even easier then because we were all at the same shoes. Um, and yeah, now with being remote physically away, it's even more important to connect us together, uh, all of us, because, um, it's different when you sit down together in office and discuss things than uh, talking to uh, a Zoom. So um, yeah, we, we want to bring people together, of course, with the measurement and safety first, uh, always having in our mind, 
Um, so yeah, last year, um, as you mentioned, we had a really nice uh, team building in Amboretum outside so that we could gather people together and that we spend some time together. And we try to uh, um, catch this windows of a safe environment to get us together and that we meet and uh, have a drink together and just discuss not just business, but also um, personal things. So I think this is even more important yeah. now. And also, you know, during when this was not possible, we had also a lot of online activities. So we had also amazing team building um, online. I, I um, couldn't even imagine that this would work, you know, and it worked. Mm. Um, and, you know, um, a lot of other things that we are doing also. So basically, some of the things that we couldn't do, we just, did them remotely also you know uh, events for the kids and stuff like that so all these things um, um, were really important in this time okay um that's that's really yeah that's really important and maybe this is the right uh, the right time also then to ask uh, professor Cherne uh about you know the negative and positive sides of remote uh, remote work so what is highlighted by the research we we've uh, we've heard just so many examples of virtu anna kavarna to you know uh, team building online versus in person so what does the research says about the remote uh, remote work in general Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of the things that um, also research, of course, uh, confirms or supports uh, have already been mentioned, but I just mentioned some others as well. I think we talk a lot about the negative effects related to performance management of remote workers, monitoring, um, just the general work process organization, so issues related to getting on the same page regarding the goals of what should be done, um, but then also, of course, maintaining work-life balance in this hustle culture of 24-7 constant availability, right? So these are definitely the ones that research constantly um, highlights. So maybe in addition to that, I'd like to highlight or emphasize some aspects that tend to sometimes also go unnoticed or neglected a little bit. Uh, one thing is also isolation. Um, so when we have these remote workers that um, basically are isolated from others, do not develop these meaningful relationships, um, and this also get transferred later on into also their other relationships on the friendly um, social aspect. So basically, this is more prevalent among remote workers than we might think. But over the long run, this can lead to loneliness, actual mental health issues, right? So not to just mention physical health issues of sitting behind the computer all day, um, working long hours over technology, but then using technology over leisure time as well, right? To, disconnect from work and connect socially only through technology. So this has very important negative implications also for remote workers and the organizations. Okay, then maybe just uh, let's uh, let's uh, ask our two, uh, two organizations about that. So how do you deal with work-life balance, right? And how do you maybe then um, try to take care of this isolation effect or uh, even cabin fever symptoms? So basically that uh, the employees are being isolated and, you know, alone in their role. Um, this was then emphasized with this remote uh, remote work, but also with the Corona, let's say, restrictions, right? So it is applicable for the both sides, uh, maybe. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, Katerina and Petra, maybe you can uh, go how it was in the outfit. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to point out that problems were very individual, based on the individual situation at home, you know. Um, so, as you mentioned, yes, some of the people were lonely. Uh, we have quite a few of expats that basically couldn't travel back to home. And this was a tough situation for them and they felt lonely, for example. Um, and then we had uh, parents where the kids were running around and maybe uh, they were not feeling lonely at all, you know. Uh, so. Um, it was really, it is really important that you have this individual approach in order to understand what are the actual problems and that you encourage that people are open also to express what are the challenges with which they are facing it with, right? Um, and we again offer these flexibilities in terms of, you know, one solution will not fit all um, because we are different and it's okay that we are different, right? 
Um, so um, Petra knows that she was updating our uh, guidelines, you know, um, quite often based on the talks that we received from the employees. Um, we also implemented um, so-called, we have uh, 07 talks, you know, um, where um, each employee can join. And we talked about stress and, you know, how to recognize it and stuff like that. So this kind of, um, let's say, um, um, action points were done in order to really help our employees in that tough uh, period, right? And as you said, we also, because of these highly engaged people, we had many people that worked, you know, long hours. And um, uh, then again, this manager-employee relationship was extremely important in order to identify this, talk about it, and to focus on some solutions. Maybe, Petra, from your perspective. Yeah, as Katarina mentioned, it was really a lot of different kinds of struggles and it was important to understand and then to find a solution because, yeah, one solution doesn't fit all. Um, and as Katarina mentioned, yeah, on the one hand, we had some lonely people, some people who were uh, with the family and struggling with everything that fell on their shoulders. And we had some people who were staying at home and then just working 24-7, which is also not healthy on the long run. So we also want... We needed to encourage people take a vacation go out on a walk i know we know you cannot travel but it's still important to rest so um yeah, yeah we were trying we were trying to understand different types of challenges and then help help out with um, with different initiatives perfect and in the amazon cell so it was a different situation as we heard but uh when the restrictions uh, came upon probably you know the situation also changed and maybe someone also felt isolated uh and of course the issues that uh katarina and petra highlighted so basically family life uh, was completely different uh, and home life was completely different so did you did you notice any change uh, with your employees uh, even though you know under the different circumstances or yeah we did have systematically some things uh, ours for, for good feelings uh, we, we did have a psychologist uh, coaching mentorship really pushed a lot of activities but uh, nevertheless uh, some some um, some colleagues didn't take any of um, any of chance but they still had some struggle with things so it was very important or, or i saw it we have uh, nine regional uh, uh, yeah team leaders uh and it was uh, very clear that um, those who had uh, before uh, this time good relationship trustful relationship they did have less uh, uh, problems uh, or now it was um, the time shows uh, how much you pay attention on relationship before Corona, because uh, now you couldn't um, make a lot, but you you uh, or we, we are we we are we were able to gain what we uh, doing. Well, yeah, we yes, uh, what did what we did uh, in the years before. So um, it it was a, a pretty good uh, time also. Um, to, to see uh, which uh, leader or uh, team manager needs also some help uh, by himself uh, and um, yes, where the struggles are. But uh, what I see now is uh, uh, the, the time show us now the problems because uh, when the doors were closed uh, and the people were more than less uh, 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 on the distance, uh, it was not so shown. So we were really now trying to open the doors again, to give the energy to each other, to speak about things more, uh, and to to give more uh, or to pay attention even more. Because now after Corona, there are again uh, new uh, problems. Uh, each of us take these problems uh, on a different dimension. And uh, I think um, if you are eight hours or eight plus hours in some environment, it's very important um, that um, we see some things uh, we can uh, 
uh, raise awareness, uh, speak about it. And uh, so uh, I really pay attention that our doors really open uh, back again, that people really talk again uh, and have more time with each other, uh, maybe to, to, to give us uh, also between us more energy um, and go together through these uh, yes, tough times. Yeah, uh, uh, that's something. Yeah. <laughs> like, like uh, it's. I think the the key point is the communication, and it was mm -hmm. before Corona, during Corona, and even more now. Because uh, during Corona, it was two two years that we were closed, and maybe we didn't um, find some touching points so often. Uh, like in this time now, when the doors <laughs> are reopening. But I think in these past two years, people uh, or employees have really changed and mm -hmm. uh, changed their priorities. So we now maybe are more aware of the freedom we can have and that what the important things are. So we have to evaluate <laughs> a little bit our values and to pay even more attention, uh, to hear even more and uh, to rebuild the trust that we can, we can give to each other when we see each other, when we are together in, in a room, uh, not just online, because it's, it will never be the same. So uh, communication, 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 which is uh, and here, 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 <laughs> and then build trust and listen and help uh, people because I think there are quite a lot of problems we will have to to solve <laughs> to together in in the company. So like like just like people. I think that uh, yeah, Anissa, uh, Anissa just opened a very important point here. So um, when she mentioned that uh, people are now uh, redefining their you know priorities and as well as finding alternatives to the normal you know uh, seven to uh, seven to three or eight to four uh, lifestyle, um, we are now speaking already for, uh, as a greater resignation era, right? So that we we are seeing people. Uh, leave the organizations uh, just to have that freedom, uh, freedom that Anissa mentioned, uh, and uh, maybe um, maybe this is also really important as in terms of remote work because this is let's say also one of the one of the consequences of it. So uh, my question here would be how how are you dealing with that? I, I mean, do you see the negative effect of that? So do you see uh, people actually leaving? So the increased fluctuation because of the remote work. Um, or uh, the, or you see the the normal fluctuation numbers uh, in your organization. So maybe Katerina and Petra. So have have, have have do you have any problems with the great resignation in your organization as uh, let's say consequence of the remote work? Um, we don't have we don't see a big increase of uh, mm -hmm. of fluctuation because of it. I must say that also during Corona because things were so unclear and not sure there was it was even lowering down like for our long-term uh, fluctuation and it's now maybe a bit higher because of that as well um but we don't see a big um big peak now um but we are also really flexible so um, it's not like we don't have people who are fully remote working from i don't know where uh, so we still have a hybrid so we have a combination so at least um like um, at least for some important meetings or performance reviews or some gatherings you are coming, we are coming all together. Um, so, yeah. On the other hand, what we do notice is that there is this constant fight for the talents, you know. So we are even, as a tech company, we are being more exposed because our employees can work for one USA-based company, you mm -hmm. know. So from this perspective, we are aware that we, as a company, we will need to, you know, put even much more effort into keeping our employees. And that's why all the you know relationship communication as also lucia and Anissa mentioned this is crucial in order to have mm -hmm. good relationship with the employees you know 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, and uh, and I guess that a quite a similar situation is also at Amazon, right? So that you don't see any big fluctuation uh, or let's say increase in that, but you you do have you know problems with uh, talent acquisition, of course, as there is uh, uh, you know a, a really a struggle going on for a good for the good talent, right? I think uh, all the organizations today nowadays are struggling with that, mm -hmm. and uh, I. For us, I can say uh, that it's um, correlating with uh, remote working because it's not. <laughs> but we also have a, a light, I hope, it stays like that, uh, a, a, like um, slightly higher fluctuation in the past year or past six months. But I think it's regarding, it's correlating to the things uh, that are in the market. But I not looking forward for the future but i think it will stop a little bit in the next few months because uh, the the um, how do you say sigurnost <laughs> certainty, but, but the certainty I, yeah. of the of the environment you work in, in mm -hmm. it will be a good uh, point in plus for some companies i hope we will be with <laughs> between them but yeah, also, I, 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 people sorry, switch yeah. to a different industry. That means we we really like outboard out uh, course, uh, um, outboarding course. So uh, we uh, see uh, if they struggle uh, with some uh, kind of problems um, uh, in Amazon so, or uh, where they uh, have a problem. So we see also some switch in, in industry. Uh, so um, there is uh, some kind of um, uh, there the things are moving uh, and uh, it's very good maybe also to see because the values uh, as Anissa already mentioned uh, are changing uh, and I really uh, see more here uh, the the way uh, they're going uh, so uh, the corona uh, push uh, some other uh, points out of us uh, so uh, it will be interesting also in the further months and years to see uh, yes well, uh, where these values will go how 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 will they go yes yeah and i i i, I agree with anisa completely you know the the research also shows the predictions that because we are in in the situation as we are nowadays you know this uh this uh, stagnation will happen and uh again as uh, also petra commented you know the 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 resignation will a bit decline or stabilize uh because of the uncertainty that we are in currently um so um, if we go to another really important topic uh now that uh, you know touch is the culture that both both of your companies uh, uh, share. So uh, let's go to the diversity and inclusion because uh, we've heard many times uh, over this uh, e-talk that you know one uh, one solution won't fit all. Uh, it's individualistic perspective. We need to really try to include everybody. Uh, also, you know, we have parents, we have uh, uh, other situations that are changing over, over the course of uh, remote work or just, uh, you know, pre-COVID, after COVID. Mm, so let's go first to Amazon. Uh, you, 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 you received the Vakuchi Pico uh, award and you're proactively working on diversity and inclusion. So you're also really living that. So Lucia, you're a true ally and you're a true, you know, uh, supporter of that cause. Uh, so, how do you see that uh, that comes into play with the company cultures? Uh, so, how how do you see also, uh, let's say, some success out of it? Uh, how do you see maybe how it affects the how it affects the business side um, that you're working with? I think uh, it's very beneficial to pay attention on on diversity uh, because it makes really a lot of sense sense uh, also in terms of uh, success, no? uh, maybe it's not, um, we cannot measure it uh, in detail, but uh, uh, we have a lot of practices uh, which show us in the past uh, that it brings uh, good results. Uh, so uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, diversity, or uh, fortunately, but unfortunately that a lot of people think diversity is just uh, about uh, male and females 
is so much more. And uh, I think um, if uh, we could see potential uh, in all kinds of uh, dimension of diversity, um, it, it is really uh, something that uh, adds value also in terms of uh, uh, having a good result um, end of the year. Uh, so we pay really a lot of uh, attention because we have um, eight different regions. Uh, we have 30 locations. Uh, the problems are pretty different from uh, location to location, uh, even though they do the same uh, same job or sa same services. Uh, so we, we see all, all when we uh, have gathering once or, or more a year, but um, uh, specific for a new year. Uh, there is always uh, amazing to see uh, how how different we are in details. Uh, but there, there was a great uh, sample. It's not direct about diversity, but when we had a New Year uh, New Year party online, uh, it was so amazing to see uh, because people started. Yanis, would you like to dance with me? And then uh, another said, yeah, after Yanis, I will come. And so uh, it was uh, really funny. Um, how it, it's amazing, no? uh, How how uh, much more you can get out of if if you are really in the culture open and uh, positive uh, to, to all the differences between the people there. So, so I believe that we are different uh, kind of, um, uh, we don't agree always by, by uh, all things, but this is great uh, because I always said, otherwise both will, will be, when we were all on one side, uh, both uh, won't be, <laughs> yeah. So, but the both would sing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that this is perfect. And uh, of course, you know uh, how you're ma managing diversity in your organization with all the regions and of course the uh, branches. Uh, you've been case studied as a best practice in Slovenia, but Outfit on the other hand was best practiced for their culture in general. Um, so maybe a question here is, you know, how does your uh, culture fits in this diversity and inclusion segment. So, how do you manage? Uh, how do you manage this in in terms of that? And also, uh, maybe how did uh, did your culture change over the Corona? Did you make any changes, uh, especially maybe tweaks in terms of diversity and inclusion, specifically maybe for parents or something like that? Um, so, any new initiatives on that front? So um, basically, as you said, Luca, so our culture is really our strong thing here. And we are, um, how to say this also, uh, our culture really made a great um, uh, support to us in this transformation period and in this tough time that we are now facing, you know. And um, yes, it did change. For example, we were known. Uh, that we hang out a lot, you know, that we have these team buildings, these crazy activities that connect us, right? Um, and all this was done remotely then. Um, and um, we uh, see that uh, uh, this uh, culture aspect is changing a lot and we are implementing new stuff in order to keep us together and so on. On the other hand, um, the values that we are sharing um, uh, did not change so much, you know. So we have these, our core values that are still present. And here Petra can add a bit more maybe because my voice is going down. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I can also add upon this. Um, our values, I would say in terms of diversity, we are really ex uh, accepting our uh, differences but uh, we are not um, not on the um, account of our values. Um, so there's no, uh, there's no room to go out of our values. So our values are our core and we want that we all share them. So we also, um, we are uh, constantly reviving them, seeing are there still what is keeping us together. And we saw that in this uh, remote hybrid um, 
the values are, were sticking us together because uh, one of our values work as a team. So we were connecting each other, helping out, um, asking others, how can we help out? Because we knew that it was not easy, like parents, um, it was not easy for them. Um, and then um, team members jump in to help somebody who couldn't, I don't know, uh, go on some meeting because they have homeschooling at home with, for, with kids. Um, so this really helped us. And also we have this, um, one important value is our value is own your shit. So own your shit also in terms of asking for help if you cannot do something um, because some, we were not together. So you don't see the struggles of somebody, but it's important that you understand and that you can then help. Um, so I think values really helped us a lot and are the like the binding thing that keep us together. Perfect. I think that we all got a meeting notification that we have in another another session in in ten minutes. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a great time for the last question. Um, so um, you know, this remote work, uh, Corona, and also when it comes to side hustling, uh, the learning is really crucial. So talent development uh, and uh, let's say getting the new skills that we already we already have. I think that's you know what makes uh, makes uh, organization grow in terms of, uh, let's say, people. Um, so I would just like to uh, hear your, let's say, initiatives or strategies, how you do this talent uh, talent development and, of course, learning. Um, we, we, have, we, can, we are seeing these trends that the organizations are having specific, uh, specifically learning development specialists, um, that they're, they're you know, having people in charge of that just, just, uh, just so that it's more hands-on and it's more structured. Um, and we, we know that, you know, of course, probably uh, in Outfit you have kind of the same model, you have people specialized for that. Uh, and in Amazon, uh, we know you have uh, academia for the, also for employees. So maybe if we can just you know share your best practices when it comes to that, uh, because it's really important both for remote remote work and then side hustling and you know of course uh, all the skills gathering cumulative. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Katarina and Petra, maybe you can share first. Yeah. Um, maybe I can explain yes. Katarina because your voice is <laughs> really not your best friend today. Uh, so yeah. We really believe that growth is important and we all need to grow, not, not just professionally, but also as human beings. Uh, and, and we are really not separating uh, uh, career development and personal development. It's all interconnected. Um, so and we believe that big part of growing is um, where you can grow the most is on the job. So with challenges, with different activities, with um, 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 uh, including uh, some more junior uh, um, teammates to projects so they can learn from others. So we put a lot of emphasis on this. And actually, we have um, twice per year performance reviews, which are not focused on the past, but mostly on the present. So what is, um, where do we want to grow this person? Who can help out? Which projects we can include them to? Um, how to connect it with company goals that they have this accomplishment later? And then all this learning and development that you mentioned, it's just uh, additionally. So what we cannot uh, get uh, inside, or sometimes we need some different perspective from the outside. Um, so of course we have, uh, we organize a lot of trainings and what, is, um, what we see it as a need, but the most important part is really learning on the job um, with things that you are passionate about and the company as well needs. Okay, uh, great. And uh, Anissa and Lucia, so you're doing that probably through Academia, right? Or, or you have any other different strategies, initiatives? No, we share <laughs> the thoughts of Petra and the words and the way of thinking. Uh, we also believe that grow and to be open to, uh, to, to, to learn new things, to open to knowledge, to open to... to Yes, learn new things, new ways of work are the key of our improvement. Uh, so we also have lots of uh, programs, different programs uh, through academia and uh, learning programs. Now uh, we have the, this mission to, to bring people uh, back together again and to see in person and to start to learn <laughs> person to person, not <laughs> through uh, the digital media. 
so because we think we hear or we, we see that people really need uh, this so we are trying to, to move our uh, programs back uh, are really important and uh, they are still not enough <laughs> and we have still room to improve to be better to do better things but it's uh, a holistic <laughs> approach is yes. important because you cannot divide personal and uh, or from year to year less uh, we are one person uh, 24 and uh, work-life balance is i think more life-life balance uh, that's why when we when we spoke about coaching uh, we always say nevertheless problems are some sometimes you took some problem uh, from the home to the uh, business and um, vice versa so it's it's important uh, to see us as a human this was a great uh, thought yes Okay, perfect. I think that makes uh, sense in terms of how we round it up from, you know, from what it is, the side hustling and remote work now to also how to develop uh, the talent and skills needed for that. Uh, and I think this is a great uh, opportunity now also to uh, give the stage back to Matei uh, to just make, let's say, a wrap up and also um, answer some of the questions from the public. So yeah, Matei, for is yours. Yeah, I think I think this was a very nice insight into what actually goes on in our companies and how this connects to what research tells us. Um, yeah, I was just uh, was going over the questions and I think we answered, um, I guess, the one on managing to get people connected in the hybrid workplace. We heard a lot about the initiatives related to online as well as offline team building, especially, and how to lead online meetings. But maybe just to kind of wrap up with the final question related to remote uh, to side hustling, which is, I think, quite interesting. Do you have an idea? Um, yeah, and here you have the question in each of the companies of how many or what percentage of people actually do side hustle or how many? And do they have to or should they ask for that, basically, in terms officially, contractually even? Um, so, yeah, I don't know, outfit. Um, well, what's it like there and then we can move to um, in our case I would say that percentage is not very high because of mm -hmm. the, the things that we mentioned so that people have opportunity to do a lot of things also inside of the company and that we are um, you know providing a lot of challenges within uh, their passion and within their work um, so we, we don't even, we discuss it, you know, with, with the managers and so on, but we do not measure it in a way that we would be able to provide you the numbers, you know. You keep it unofficial, for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lucia and Anissa. Uh, yes, we, we don't have a concrete uh, number to say uh, how many in percentage, uh, percentage. Uh, but uh, it's important not to have some kind of com com competitive activity, you know, uh, that's very, very important for us. Uh, so here is basically the line uh, when it stops, but uh, besides um, this, uh, um, it would be interesting <laughs> to measure it, uh, but yeah. Okay, well, great. Um... I'll just basically thank you now, um, Lucia, Anissa, Katarina, Petra, for being with us, for sharing these insights. Thank you to the audience. Um, and now Masha will wrap up. Thank you, Matei, for saying thanks in, in <laughs> behalf of us. Uh, yeah, thank you all for your thoughts, for your time to being with us. Of course, uh, flexibility is important. Uh, side hustle is a fact. Oh. And we will see what, what the future brings to all of us. And of course, uh, for for the audience, uh, follow us on www.cepofa.se, www.cepofa.pikasi in Slovenian, uh, for all the future events, talks, academies, and, and other programs. So thank you all, all and I uh, hope to see you soon in person or, or online. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.